right, welcome back. And you're watching Newsline tonight on the network service. And let's begin. So unlike in the past, when some of us found ways to skip the mandatory National Youth Service School, today's graduates eagerly anticipate, you know, to don the NYSC uniform, of course, getting deployed to new states and making lifelong friends. And of course, experiences at the camp sometimes can range from being stressful and frustrating to genuinely pleasant, very, very pleasant memories. And so for the 2024 NYSE Batch B Stream 1 in Lagos, the closing ceremony was truly, truly unforgettable. And our correspondent, Joy uh, Ken Abakoya, brings us the full story of uh, that memorable event that we hear left both staff and co-members with very lasting impressions. We want to hear all about the surprises and excitement that unfolded in Lagos. Now, what you learn in school doesn't really define you. It's the ambition you nurse and nurture that really uh, shapes your destiny. And of course, that brings true for many people, including me. And as the saying goes, when you uh, judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, of course, we all know it will spend its entire life believing that it is stupid. So on July 21st, Dr. Fola David completed a breathtaking graphical impression on a 1,000 square meter canvas. And we hear that this monumental work places him in a race for the Guinness World Record, which makes him the largest drawing by an individual. Of course, it's currently held by Ravi Sony. And Michael Olaleya captured this captivating moment full news line. Floating on the wave of this melodious tune, Gabriel Adonija conveniently straddles two continents, Turkey in Europe and Nigeria in Africa. Although he is an indigenous of Kogi state, one can hardly place him as he blew out this Turkish piece on his flute with ease and dexterity. Young Ibrahim Usman shares Gabriel's affinity with Turkey. Barely six months in class at this Turkish center, he is well on his way to mastering the language and the culture. Along with 34 others, Young Ibrahim is a privileged member of the Turkish orphanage home and a pupil of this institute, which is one of the many platforms that serve to promote cultural exchange between Nigeria the European nation. Back home from a recent diplomatic shuttle to Turkey, Nigeria's first lady, Olura Mitsunumbo, is visiting this institute. First, to keep a promise to her counterpart, Emini Erdogan, and also to push the cause of cultural diplomacy between the two nations. The center promotes Nigerian arts, and the first lady was just in time to open an art exhibition mounted by female visual artist from Nigeria. I love this. I want, want you to explore more on this. Yes. The exhibition gave credence to the saying that women are the best collectors of emotions, with the paintings and artwork on display portraying the resilience, strength, beauty, as well as the travels of the Nigerian woman in colors and strokes. Stories here are from different Nigerian women from different um, geopolitical zones, and a story about empowerment about culture, about enriching the country, and better ways to improve our society. See, that's a woman that even looks like me. Their first lady was at home with the artist, and their interaction, though relaxed and chatty, was inspiring. There are a lot of feats you can achieve if your mind is right. So you just have to know what you are doing, believe in what you are doing, and then one day the spotlight is shone on you. On the need for the exchange between the two countries to flow in both directions, the first lady was clear. So, I put the Turkish ambassador to Nigeria 
on the spot about what he knows about Nigerian culture. Well, I love yam, yam, uh, food with yam. Jollof jola rice is very nice. I love jollof rice as well. Not too spicy, but I love it. Akaro is Yoruba. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Can you sit for me, Akaro? Akaro. Akaro. <laughs> In turn, I bade him gule gule, a Turkish word for goodbye. Now, Claire, allow me to say merhaba to you. And that's saying hello in Turkish. All right, merhaba to you also, Taiwo. And I really do apologize. That was the story of the First Lady's engagement with the Turkish Embassy. Of course, uh, strengthening our relationship, our uh, bilateral relationship, you know, go using our culture. And it was indeed phenomenal and inspiring. Again, Thaiwo, well done. Maheba also, hello, meaning hello in Turkish language. Now, let's come back home now. And conceived by a love that began as an innocent crush on a local musician known as Yatu, Kumsu Bulama Modu Stare is one of romance and rhythm. Now, her parents' beautiful love story, inspired by music, set the stage for Gumsu's extraordinary journey. And for the past 25 years, Gumsu Bulama Modu has kept the touch of Kanuri music aflame, becoming one of the most remarkable traditional singers in the region. And her songs captured the rich cultural tapestry of the Kanuri people, preserving and celebrating the heritage. Mohammed Abubakar takes us on an inspiring journey into the life of this extraordinary female musician from Bono State. <laughs> Haja Gumsumodu, who began her career during the reign of the grandfather of the present Sheho of Borno, Sheho Garbe Al Amin El Kanemi, is to the Kanuris what led Mama Shata Kazana, Musa Donkwero, Namaraya Jos, were to the Hausa clan entertainment wise, or what led Oliver de Kok or Harune Ishola, were to the Ibo and Yoruba clans in the southern part of Nigeria. Her getting married to an entertainer eventually made her to develop interest in singing progressively rising to stardom within and outside the shores of Nigeria so much that she later eclipsed her husband in the industry. She shared with the NTA more on how her journey in the entertainment industry started. My journey into singing profession started the very day I saw that musician who came to my village, Jakana, to stage a performance after which I developed a strong interest in singing so much that I was warned by my parents not to take interest in such a practice being a woman. I, however, remained adamant, so much that I subsequently became a singer myself and even got married to that my crush, and the rest is history. She speaks on what formed the basis of her performance. I became so popular when I started singing that any time a social activity or wedding involving the Kanuri was being organized, either in Nigeria, Niger Republic, Chad or Cameroon, you will find me there. Looking at the fact that she had been in the business for more than half a century now and still counting, could she recollect in number of terms her collections? I told you I have been singing for more than half a century. How, for goodness sake, can I recollect in number terms my works so far? Gumsumudu, who is a recipient of several awards within and outside the shores of Nigeria, uses simple but powerful instruments in any of her performances called in Kanu parlance Dunu, Bala, and Kolo. <laughs> Some prominent Kanuri speak on what Gomsi mean to the entertainment industry, Kanuri culture in particular. She is a legendary Kanuri woman press singer who has been mesmerizing our community. The song she sings is what impact captivates and then inspires people. <laughs> All right, many thanks, Mohammed Abubakar, for that story. And by the way, Mohammed Abubakar is the zonal director coordinating our Midugri Network Center. 
Uh, start off tonight was a bit bumpy, uh, so fasten your seat belts. We'll take in a break. When we come back, we will reset and you can rest assured of a smooth flight. Don't go away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please do fasten your seat belts. This plane is about to take off properly now. So it's not just a wedding, it was an event that rekindled beautiful memories, an event filled with nostalgia and joy. The groom, Abdul Aziz, is the son of Brigadier General Mustafa Deniz on Yiveta, who served as aide de to the late President Omar Musa Aradua. And as suspected, former First Lady Tere Aradua was in attendance, along with former President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan who also served as Vice President under President Aradua. Now, the presence added a special touch and brought back memories of a significant era in Nigeria's history, making the wedding of Abdul Aziz and Dr. Nusaiba feel like a reunion of cherished times. Let's take it from Abdullahi Amino. Here was the atmosphere for the wedding party of Abdul Aziz and Dr. Nuseiba Gambo at the Bauchi Central Mosque, led by the Emir of Bauchi Lirwanu Suleiman Adamu. Seven number of gold coins was paid as the bride prize. <laughs> Taking place of this marriage has paved the way for a colorfully and organized reception. The groom's father was not left behind among those that have dined and wined. I want the couples to, to remain as peaceful as possible, and the only thing that can be peace is patience. Wedding of a, a child is the best thing that can happen to any parent, and uh, I'm so grateful to God. Um, I am alive and I'm witnessing today, uh, seeing my son getting married to his, uh, his heart drop. It's something that is lifelong and that patience, understanding, communication will keep them through. Um, I advise them to love themselves, to care for themselves, to listen to themselves at, at all times. May Allah guide them. Blaz is very lucky, he's a very lucky man to have her. I wish for them. Is, uh, the wish peace and compassion the and Allah's blessings in the for, uh, marriage. The newly couple's wish is for a successful magic to happen in their marriage. I thank Almighty Allah for making it easy for us to meet ourselves and uniting both of us and uniting both families. And I also want to thank everyone in attendance uh, for gracing us with their presence. To witness this big day is a lifetime dream for everybody and uh, we pray that Allah guide us through the journey. After a homage to the Emir of Bochi in his palace by the groom's father, Brigadier General Onoi Veta and the former chief of naval staff, Awal Zubair Gambo, was another dignified celebration in Abuja, the bride's marital home. Former President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, former Nigerian First Lady Ture Eradua, as well as those serving and retired military officers, graced the celebration. And we believe that when the royal prayer, God will bring them together and they will be in perfect love, live happily together, and give us our own grandchildren. We pray that God will protect them, God will guide them, and the children will have hope. May Allah bless them. Let's come. It's for them to really work hard to make their marriage work. I pray that uh, they all join me in praying for the couple to have a fruitful life and a nice marriage. For the newly couples, welcome to the supplement process of each other's minimum daily requirement. Family of the bride, 
Now, attaining the age of 90 is quite a milestone indeed. It's not often that one gets to celebrate a nonagenarian, but when it does happen, it comes with a lot of blessings. Recently, in Ubulukiti and Yocha South, local government area of Delta State, the community came together to honor Pa Samson Azu as he joined the extreme club of nonagenarians. Amina Daniels captured the joyous and heartwarming moment of this special celebration. The sleepy town of Ubulokiti, a Nocha South local government area of Delta State, springs to life as Pa Samson Madweje Okoli Azo turns 90. After the early morning homage from his in laws, all roads lead to St. Paul's Anglican Church Ubulokiti, venue of the Thanksgiving service, with family, friends, and well wishers on hand to have called the nonagenarian the needed love and warmth. No doubt, 90 years is such a significant milestone that not everyone attends it. But the celebrant makes it look easy thanks to good health and strength. All we are celebrating today is God's grace upon our Done with the church service. The table is set just around the corner. It also turns an opportunity for guests to take past Samson Azu down memory lane in tributes. Prayer is that God will continue to keep you strong and healthy. It's important for me that while you're alive, you can see this kind of love being shown on them. Daddy has been amazing. I'm so blessed to have him as a father-in-law. I can only wish him a long life and in good health and sound mind so that at 100 we go again. Let's pray that God keeps you safe. God's mercy and God's grace will continue to shine upon him. May God continually bless you. As the party winds down in Ubulokiti, another begins in Asaba, the Delta State capital, where some guests were treated to an evening of fun and relaxation. And the celebrant acknowledges the grace of God in his 90 years of existence so far, including the gift of his children who put the event together. So proud of them. After all said and done, it is mighty hard to choose and many more years ahead for our Samson Azu. Congratulations to Pa Samson Azu. Now, even if you're not in the military, the name IBM Haruna will definitely resonate with you. Known for instilling discipline as part of his family's professional code, IBM Haruna retired as a major general at an early age of 37. Now that's a time when many are still striving to achieve their dreams. Now at 84, he's not just a living library, but a generational asset. And on his 84th birthday, he resisted the lure of milestone celebrations. Instead, he chose to engage with the vibrant youth of Nigeria, urging them to shun violence and embrace peace. Abubakar Kwanga had the privilege of witnessing this inspiring event for Newsline. Born some 84 years ago, IBM Aruna joined the Nigerian Army and had a fulfilled career, rising to the rank of Major General and serving in the military government as Federal Commissioner for Information. This strong character fought hard battles lived a regimented life and returned to a peaceful retirement with the recognition of the title of Walian Garkida by his community of Adamawa State. A golfer of many medals, a family man and a world veteran, still has a penchant for the growth, unity and prosperity of Nigeria and its people. 
But there is a surprise by the man who put his life in the front line during the Nigerian civil war that lasted 30 months and the chairman of the Northeast Leaders of Thought as he makes a wish in presence of other eminent personalities as he journey into non-Egenarian. When the civil war broke out, we had, we all had no other options than to make all the sacrifices to keep Nigeria as one. Let me use the occasion of the celebration of my birthday to appeal to our youths who are planning some protests around the country to give the government of the day a chance to settle down, to work. The government has just spent one year in office. Hopefully, when it gets its acts in order, it should be able to improve the living conditions of the people. Is the leader of the North East leaders of SOT, and he is also a leader in his own right in Nigeria. He is an elder statesman who has given his best to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He has been an outstanding leader, just like he was an outstanding military person. And he has guided us all through, and we have learned a lot from his wisdom. We thank God that up till now, he is still strong. A most respected statesman in the northeast region from where we all come. Uh, for us, he represents all the good values that we in the northeast cherish. These are the people we look up to them as mentors. We were happy and uh, pleasantly surprised to see that he had the state of affairs of the nation at heart and he gave a press conference. In the press conference, he commended the president. He also appealed um, to Nigerians not to go on a protest. As a two-star general and octogenarian, members of the media were close to wrap up with a photograph. After all, they are in the business of making history. And they said, pictures don't lie. And indeed, pictures don't lie. Now, Vice President Kashim Shetima is imploring Nigerians to shun the planned nationwide protest, saying it is time for unity and focused development in our country. Now, he gave the advice at the show of Bono Pulse when the royal father gave out three of his daughters in marriage at a wedding ceremony in Madukiri, the Bono state capital. And Umar Jim Brarima reports. The event was attended by notable figures, including Vice President Kashim Shetima, Governor Babagana Umar Zulum, former Borno State Governor Senator Alimadu Sharif, Jeng Apolos Chu, Emir of Lafia, Emir of Etsu, among others. Kashim Shetima, Emir of Lafia, and Ali Bukhar Dandori stood as representatives of the family, which were then Fatiha was officiated by Imam Ideni of Borno, Imam Shetima Maman Sali. <laughs> I wish to implore on our youth not to follow the path of anarchy, of destruction. We have had enough challenges in Borno, in the sub-region, and the nation as a whole. Other well-wishers could not hide their joy as they wished the newlyweds uh, happy married life. The Shehu of Borno, Abu Bakr ibn Umar Garbay Al-Amin al kanemi expressed his heartfelt gratitude to everyone who attended the ceremony from near and far. Thank you very much. I wish each and every one safe journey back to their respective destinations and may Almighty Allah restore permanent peace to our country. Indeed, the Shehu of Borno's daughter's wedding served as a reflection of peaceful coexistence and harmonious living with the convergence of people from all walks of life. And you're watching Newsline. Let's take another commercial break. When we come back, we'll bring you more stars. 
Welcome back. Now, there's a saying among the robo people in Nigeria, and I quote, no matter the speed of a car on TV, it can never kill the viewer. And it speaks to their wisdom and unique perception about life. And since the 1930s, the robots have recognized their distinctiveness and unity. And through the Robo Leadership Forum, they celebrate their vibrant culture and also honor outstanding individuals in various fields. Now, under the leadership of one of NTA's finest program producers, Bitaiho, the forum continues to embody their slogan, Orobo Ovuvo, which means strength in unity. And Elizabeth Omori captures the thrilling moment at this year's leadership award ceremony, where, of course, the essence of Uruba culture and excellence was displayed. <laughs> Very unique sound, peculiar to one of the major ethnic groups in the Delta region, the Urubus. The metal gong, maracas and basket rattle often accompany their indigenous music at any of their gatherings. And this award ceremony by the Urubu Leadership Forum Abuja is no exception. Aside the show of culture, it was a platform to celebrate individuals who left indelible marks in their various fields of endeavor and those still making tremendous impacts. They were recognized in five categories, academic, business, entertainment, career and proficiency, as well as innovators and inventors. Senator Fred Brume, Sadiq Daba and Rachel Oniga received posthumous notes for their remarkable contributions to national development. From a young age up till now, to maintain the level of consistency and now to be celebrated by my, my, my ethnic nationality, really, it's, it's, I'm really grateful to God. He enjoyed life, he enjoyed impacting people, and he has left indelible prints. The think tank believes a united and progressive Nigeria can be achieved if there's effective mobilization of resources for all-round development and mentoring of the youth to see leadership as a call to service. To challenge the Robo Leadership Forum and to other Robo Association is how to identify these niches and domesticate them in data. Many are stories of excellence in difficult environment inspire us to strive for greatness. If all of us go back and develop our trust properly, enrich them with all the values that we want in our society. Hard work, integrity, honesty, all that. And then when we do that, then we can now come to equity, to the central area, each one coming with all values. The Urobo Leadership Forum Abuja is committed to promoting peace and development. <laughs> Now, like the past, when some of us found ways to skip the mandatory National Youth Service, today's graduates really anticipate wearing the NYS uniform, getting deployed to the new states, and of course, making lifelong friends, experiencing uh, different you know, uh, emotions from stress to frustration to genuinely pleasant memories. Now, but for the 2024 NYSE Batch C, Batch B Stream 1 in Lagos, it was an unforgettable moment. And Joy Ken Abakoya brings us the full story of what happened. That was the reaction of core members when Governor Babajide Songwulu, fully kitted in NYC uniform, arrived at the orientation camp for the closing ceremony of the 2024 Batch B Stream 1 in Lagos. He begins by inspecting the Guard of Honor. Then he watched keenly various displays by the core members. Hey! 
the governor promises the release of funds for the completion of the 14,000-bed capacity NYSE Lagos permanent camp at Agbowa Ikorudu area. You truly, truly, really deserve a permanent site. And so this year alone, I'll be putting available a total of five billion that I'll be using to start the full development of the permanent site for NYC. You can say Christmas came early for this set of core members as Governor Sonwulu continues to reel out promises. And so with all sense of responsibility, and because you've been very hardworking, each and every one of you will go home with a hundred thousand naira. The monies will be available into your account by next week. Through these programs, they have acquired some life skills, discovered themselves, improved on their talents, and have learned above all that the most important ingredient of leadership, which is very important, they have learned teamwork and collaboration. Of the 4,000 core members posted to Lagos for the Batch B Stream 1 orientation, only 2,822 were accommodated at Iyanopaja, Lagos, with others camped at Oshun and Ogun states. In case you are wondering, I didn't skip the NYSC. I still remember the lyrics of the NYSC anthem. Youths obey the clarion call. And so, let's quickly obey the call for commercial break. And it's been great piloting Newsline tonight. Until next week, Sunday, please stay curious, stay connected, and help make NTA's reach unbeatable. Good night.